Um, yeah, so I'm going to be talking about BMAP treatment of the internal memory chain, uh, the IMC, and specifically the methodologies that we developed and used for the planning study that Ali has talked about in, in her two talks earlier in the webinar. And I'll also discuss how we've em uh, implemented these techniques clinically at our centre. Um, so just a quick outline of the talk. So I'll introduce the VMAP planning technique that, that we use at the Royal Marsden for both the planning study and that we've clinically implemented. I'll go through some examples. I'll spend a bit of time talking about issues to consider with a VMAP technique. It's not always, um, it's not like a magic bullet that always works and there are some specific considerations to take into account and sometimes we found um, tangents can actually be better. Um, and then our Finally, in the uh, talk about some future improvements um, that we hope to implement in the not too distant future. Um, okay, so to start with, uh, an introduction to VMAP planning for breast with IMC irradiation. Um, Alison has um, already discussed the HeartSpare Plus 1A planning study in this webinar, but briefly it consisted of uh, scanning patients in both breast hold, that's BH, and free breathing and we uh, generated uh, wide tangent plans, VMAP plans, somatherapy plans, and proton plans for these patients. So we ended up with 98 plans in total and compared their target volume coverage and organ at risk dose. Um, so why do we want to use an inverse planning technique? Um, well, the results of the HeartSpare Plus 1A planning study showed um, that when only considering the LINAC-based photon techniques uh, in breath hold, there was a significant increase um, in coverage of the nodal PTVs and also uh, which include the IMC PTV and also just the uh, IMC PTV itself. So if we look at the uh, examples highlighted here and just the bottom rows which show the V90, V36 grey. Um, um, so here, so the VMAT in uh, breath hold was achieving over 96% of V36 for the PTV nodes, and that reduced to under 75% um, for the Y tangent plans. And we had similar results uh, when we just uh, analyzed the IMC PTVs as well. Um, so if we want to get a good uh, dose to the IMCs, we think that we need some sort of inverse planning technique opposed to just Y tangents. Um, so the VMAT arms of the planning study, we used uh, what we call a bow tie method, which consists of two partial arcs, each consisting of about 50 to 60 uh, degrees of gantry rotation. Um, and these partial arcs are typically centered around the gantry angles that you would expect for your tangent plans. Um, we found that by entering um, at various gantry angles, we were able to achieve um, higher doses and more conformal uh, dose distributions to the nodes when compared to tangent plans. So the image on the left um, shows what would typically be a starting um, attempt, the, start, uh, the first attempt at gantry angles for a typical um, bow tie VMAP plan. But of course, um, the start and stop angles for our VMAP beams are patient dependent. So the case on the right has a contralateral breast which um, extended quite anteriorly. So we modified the angles of the partial arcs to ensure that we didn't enter through the contralateral breast tissue. Um, before I actually get onto the planning technique itself, whenever you move from, say, a simple technique such as tangents to a more complex technique uh, such as BMAT, we wanted to make sure um, that the plans that we were generating had a similar robustness um, to the tangents. Um, so we did um, some robustness checks and we did this in two ways. First of all, we looked at the planned versus an estimate of delivered dose. And here we took a cohort of 10 patients who were treated as part of the import trial and therefore had cone beam CT image verification. Um, for these patients, we generated tangents and bow tie VMAP plans. We then calculated the dose of both of these plans on all the, XV all the cone beam CT images for all of the patients. 
uh, within the radiation treatment planning system. And then we deformed all of these dose cubes back to the planning CT geometry. And then we could sum those dose cubes to get an estimate, estimate of delivered dose um, for the patients. And then we could compare that with a planned dose. So the top row on the left shows a slice of the planned dose for a tangent plan. And then uh, to the right of that, what our estimate of the delivered dose was. And on the right of that, and I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see it, but there's uh, two DVHs where the, um, for the whole breast CTV, where the solid line represents what was planned and the dotted line what our estimate of delivered dose to that CTV was. And then below that is the corresponding data for a typical VMAP plan as part of this study. And for this case, uh, both uh, for tangents and the VMAP plan, the dose to the whole, whole breast CTV was reduced by similar amounts. And then when we studied, when we analyzed all of the patients in this study, we found that there was no difference um, in terms of the change to the CTV coverage uh, for VMAT compared to tangents. The second robustness check that we did uh, was a more simple uh, perturbed dose by shifting the isocenter. So we got um, a different set of 10 patients and we actually planned tangents um, to treat the breast, the IMC, and nodes. And we also created bowtie VMAP plans. And then we shifted the isocenter by various amounts ranging from plus half a centimeter to minus half a centimeter. And then we could compare the perturbed doses uh, to planned doses um, as a, uh, a check of setup errors. Um, and the top row on the left, we have a planned tangent dose distribution. And to the right of that, we've got two different perturbed doses. And then finally on the right, we've got the solid line is the planned dose to our CTVs and the dotted lines are our perturbed doses. And the row beneath that is the equivalent or the corresponding data for our VMAP plans. And once again, we found that actually when we did these tests, there was no significant difference uh, between the change in dose between our bowtie VMAT and our tangent plans. So for these, well, these two tests have shown that for the cases studied at least, uh, the bowtie VMAT plans had a similar robustness to the tangent plans in terms of an estimate of delivered dose and an isocenter shift. But of course, um, this doesn't necessarily um, include uh, rarer situations where a individual patient may have large uh, breast swelling or there might be a change in a seroma, for example, but I'll talk about that in more detail later. Um, so our VMAP technique, um, our bowtie VMAP technique uh, that we use, we want to limit the plan complexity to make um, the aperture shapes and the overall delivery as simple as possible. Um, we do that using various techniques. So we use a modification of our B model where we insist that MLC leaf pairs are at least two centimeters apart from each other. We limit the maximum delivery time of each partial arc to 45 seconds. That has two effects. Firstly, it means that um, each partial arc, we should be able to deliver within three breath holds which if we've got two partial arcs, that would be six breath holds, which is similar to what we would have in a tangent plus SCS plus post axilla delivery. But also by limiting the maximum delivery time, we limit the opportunity the optimizer has at moving the MLC leaves, which should make our apertures um, less complex. Um, we also limit the leaf, the MLC leaf motion during rotation to 0.8 centimeters per degree of rotation. Um, so this shows a typical beam's eye view of one of our partial arcs for a bowtie VMAP plan that we treated recently. So the pink region is our whole breast PTV and the blue region is our nodal PTV, including the IMC. And you can see that for a large proportion of the partial arc, we have mostly got an open field um, conforming to our target volumes. And then at some gantry angles, we, the MLCs close in to get the desired dose distribution that we want. For all of our breast uh, VMAP plans, we uh, do a pre-treatment um, verification on the machine to ensure that what we think 
we're delivering is what we're delivering um, in terms of uh, the plan. And we do that via the Delta IV um, machine, uh, Phantom software. And similarly to um, what was discussed in the tomotherapy talk earlier, one of our concerns when we're doing an inverse technique for breast radiotherapy is that our target tissue extends to the surface of the skin. We want to shape our MLCs to the entire target, but we want to avoid boosting in the build-up region towards the skin. Um, so we can achieve this by using a virtual bolus technique. And to, to do this, we expand all of our PTVs by one centimeter whilst avoiding the interior of the body. And so the, the region of the PTV that goes up to the skin, we have a one centimeter rind out, outside of the body. And then we apply a density of water to this uh, virtual bolus region of interest. And then we can optimize and plan with that um, fake bolus in place, and we can optimize and shape our MLCs to the entire PTVs in the knowledge that we should hopefully be avoiding boosting and boosting in the build-up region, because in that scenario, we can physically get dose there. Then once we're happy with the plan, we can turn off that virtual bolus density override, recalculate the plan, re-prescribe it to a PTV that is edit edited away from the build-up region and then observe the dose distribution. So here's an example of two um, corresponding fields, one on the left that was planned using the virtual bolus technique and one on the right which was planned and optimized to an edited PTV. So on the left we're achieving a much better skin flash which means that we're both sh and we are both shaping our MLCs um, to the entire target volume, and we should be um, somewhat more robust to either setup errors or also uh, increases in breast tissue due to swelling or potentially a seroma. So this is a summary of our VMAT treatment technique. So I'll give the example in the context of a left-sided breast case. So our arc one starts at 150 degrees and stops at 90. The second arc starts at zero and stops at 300. We use this two centimeter beam model and we limit each arc to 45 seconds. We use the virtual bolus technique and then after removal of that fake bolus, we prescribe to an edited left breast PTV only. And I'm not gonna go through this in detail, but here is our starting solution for our objective function. And this example was for a left-sided patient that was prescribed to 42.72 gray and 16 fractions. Um, in certain circumstances, the bow tie uh, will need to be modified, like I mentioned earlier. And then, especially in cases uh, where the whole breast PTV falls quite posterior, we may need to actually change and actually use a longer continuous arc like that on the bottom right. But what I would say is that the region in between the two arcs, um, the two bow tie arcs, is where the beam would be exiting through the heart and lung and the optimizer tends to want to close the MLCs in this position. So there's limited benefits of having gantry angle entry points there. Um, but we have found in certain circumstances um, one longer partial arc um, is beneficial. <clears throat> so for our VMAP technique, we would uh, recommend treating in breath hold. Uh, so we use both ABC and uh, a, a breath hold technique at the Royal Marsden. This not only um, affords favorable geometry like the two images below show, so on the left we have a breath hold scan and on the right the corresponding um, slice for free breathing and you can see that by just superimposing tangent uh, beams um, that the, the left hand image is a better geometry in terms of sparing the lung and the heart. Um, so not only does it offer favorable geometry uh, but it's um, 
more reproducible and it limits intrafraction motion and we're more comfortable um, with breath hold when we're having a um, VMAT delivery uh, where uh, the plans are inherently more uh, complex than a tangent plan. And then we also, as Ali mentioned in her talk just a moment ago, we do daily online cone beam CT to set up. Um, so I'll go through some examples. So here is an example case that we treated recently using the uh, VMAT bow tie technique. So again, the whole breast PTV is in pink and the nodal PTV is in blue. And the green line represents the 95% isodose line. Um, so we are able to achieve good conformal coverage of our whole breast without going into the contralateral breast much, which can be a problem sometimes with wide tangents. And as we go up, we are much better able to deliver prescription dose to the, to the nodes and uh, be conformal when compared to our ant SCF field. So here's um, an example comparing um, nodal doses. Now I should say this is for a different patient at different levels, but it shows that for our uh, VMAT, our bowtie VMAT on the right, we are able to achieve higher doses and more conformal doses than an, just a simply an ant field on the left. Um, so if we actually look at some of the um, doses that have been delivered to our patients as part of um, our heart spare trial. So if we just look at, say, the V36 gray to the IMC in VMAT, we are achieving above 95%, whereas in tangents, we, were, we are achieving less, well, about 71%. These, lines are, these results are in line with the planning study and they do demonstrate that we are able to achieve a better dose with the bowtie VMAP when it is necessary. Um, we're also able to prospectively um, review the delivered dose using the methods um, that I described earlier and these results have broadly been in line with what we found out when we were doing our robustness checks. And here's an example of a recent patient um, that was treated with uh, bowtie VMAT whose target extended to the right hand side and uh, we just wouldn't have been able to have found a solution for this patient using tangents. Um, so bowtie VMAT was able to do a pretty good job in this case. <clears throat> so some issues to consider. So. Um, First thing I want to talk about is uh, swelling or, well, all reduction, but generally a change in external contour. Uh, so we're doing daily online um, imaging, so we can be told by the radiographers on the treatment unit at a very early stage if they're seeing a change in external contour, and then we'll review it as appropriate. Um, but of course, this is more of a problem for an inverse planning technique where we're optimizing and we're shaping our MLCs to a PTV volume compared to a tangent plan where we can include large regions of skin flash to somewhat account for this sort of scenario. So when we see a case um, like we see on the top row here on cone beam TT, what we can do is use the information from the cone beam CT to um, do an estimate of delivered dose under the geometry where the treatment was delivered. So we can bring in the cone beam CT into the planning software, and then we can create um, density override regions of interest, which are shown on the bottom left image, um, where the tissue is falling on a daily basis. And then we can recalculate the plan um, with that density in place, and then we can do an assessment, a dosimetric assessment, to see whether or not we think the plan is still acceptable. Um, if it's not acceptable and we have to undertake a replan, the most uh, pragmatic approach may be to do a wide tangent replan uh, because we could do this a lot more quickly. Um, here's a, another example of a patient um, that was originally booked for a bowtie VMAT plan 
um, late last year, but due to this sheer size, both in terms of separation and uh, just general cup size, our bow tie VMAT technique was unable to provide a satisfactory solution. Um, and so we tried various different um, beam arrangements, uh, like I showed earlier, but our optimizer wasn't able to find a solution. So in this case, we had to go to a tangent plan because we didn't have any other choice. Um, and then some general comments. They can be difficult to plan, certainly compared to tangent planning. Um, they're slow to plan, but of course, this is somewhat treatment planning system dependent, and I'll discuss um, some improvements in this area um, in the next couple of slides. And for all the reasons I've already discussed, they are inherently less, less robust than tangents. So you have to um, be able to review imaging and um, act when appropriate. Um, so the final section of the talk is about future improvements. So in our clinic, we now have ray station, and we hope to plan our a VMAT breast with IMC on this treatment planning system in the near future. So on RayStation version 7, um, they have a new feature called Robust Organ Motion, uh, and which can be used for um, optimization. And in this module, you can select a motion region of interest and any number of fixed regions of interest. And the TPS can then create a deformed simulated CT scan that keeps the fixed regions of interest stationary, uh, but deforms, creates a deformed CT according to the selected motion for the motion region of interest. So in this example here, I selected the whole breath, but so this is for a left-sided case, I've selected the whole breath CTV as the motion ROI, and I said that it could move 1.5 centimeters left and 1.5 centimeters anteriorly, and I said that the left lung is a fixed region of interest. And that's because we would be matching to the chest wall for the cone beam CT verification. The TPS um, can then create deformed simulated CT images that have moved the breast, the breast, the left breast, uh, left and anterior um, according to our motion that we specified, but kept the chest wall fixed. So the simulated uh, CTs appear in blue in these images below, and the original planning CT appears in orange, and those regions where we have a good match between the two appear in grey, so the majority of the image is grey because it's not deformed in those regions. So along with these simulated deformed CTs, um, we map all the regions of interest using the deformation vector field onto the simulated CTs, meaning the PTV in all these three scenarios um, is more appropriate um, if that was the scenario being treated. So we basically created um, various scenarios on the left by, move, by deforming the CT so it's extended left, in the middle it's extended anteriorly, and on the right is a combination of the two moves. Um, and these images really do represent a worst case swelling scenario that I don't think we've seen anything like this on our cone beam CT verification. But what we can do then during optimization is say, I want to treat my whole breast uh, PTV to prescription dose, and I want to do that in all of the simulated scenarios. So the optimizer will optimize in the nominal planning CT scenario, but it will also try to ensure that your objectives are met in all of these different scenarios as well. And as such, we should be able to introduce skin flash without using our virtual bolus technique. Um, so we've done some initial work on this, and here's an example of one of the plans we've generated. So on the left is a single slice showing both the whole breast PTV in pink and, and the IMC PTV there in blue. And we've got a good conformal dose distribution. And on the, on the right hand side, we have um, in yellow, we've got uh, that the region of interest of all the PTVs which extends to the skin surface. So um, in the majority of gantry angles, 
for this sort of optimization, we're able to achieve around one and a half to two centimeters of skin flash, so not too dissimilar from a tangent plan. So hopefully um, a good way of adding robustness to a VMAP plan. And then just on the final slide, um, because this TPS is faster than what we currently use, um, and its optimization has been working very well. On the bottom image, this is the plan that I showed maybe five minutes ago that we were unable to treat with Bowtie VMAT using our current treatment solutions. And this is a slice of the clinically treated tangent plan where you can see that large volumes outside the planning target, but the, uh, the whole breast target volume are receiving a high amount of dose and the nodal targets are not fully covered um, by 80%. Whereas on the top, this is uh, the same slice um, using an, our robust organ motion optimization in race station version seven. So we've got good coverage of the nodes and the whole breast and we're conforming much better to the whole breast and we're also achieving good uh, skin flash because of the robust organ motion optimization. And here are the corresponding DVHs for those two plans. So the solid lines are for our VMAT using robust organ motion optimization and the dotted ones are what was clinically treated with wide tangents. So we're seeing big advantages for the whole breast, the IMC and the nodes. So in summary, um, inverse planning is required to achieve a high dose to the IMC in the nodes. Bowtie VMAT is usually able to generate an acceptable plan. We want to limit complexity and use virtual bolus for skin flash. Daily online imaging and breath hold techniques are recommended. We need to be able to replan if necessary, and that may involve going to a tangent plan. And robust optimization looks like a promising way forward. So I'll just look at some questions. So there's a question, can you comment on how you position the treatment isocenter for the VMAT technique? Um, we position the isocenter to ensure that we're able to do our XVI imaging. So we've got an elector, um, electrolinax at our center. Um, so we use XVI. So we need to make sure that um, after we localize to the ant midline tattoo, our lateral shift is a maximum of seven centimeters. And we also want to have a maximum distance from the isocenter to couch height of 28 centimeters to ensure there's no collision. So there's, um, there's a question about future contralateral breast cancer risks after treatment with wide tangents versus VMAT. Any special considerations required in view of splash? Um, well, if you look at the data on uh, late effects, what you certainly want to do is to, to get the dose to the contralateral breast as low as possible, particularly in women under, is it 40, 40 or 35? 40. Um, there's one paper, the first author of whom um, escapes me, but I think it was the We Care study um, uh, on which they did some modeling. So, I mean, generally speaking, I think the, the younger the patient and the, um, the more intermediate the risk as compared to a high risk, heavily no positive patient, the less dose you're wanting to deliver. But generally, we've been quite successful with both the BMAT and the wide tangent techniques in keeping our mean contralateral. Absolutely. And I think um, although with the VMAP you might have more lower doses going contralaterally, with the wide tangents you often get full 95% or 100% isodoses going um, into the contralateral breast by That's virtue of the gantry angles. Which sometimes are above the contralateral breast tissue, so what the significance of that would be? Don't know. And um, the only way to get a mean contraction breast bed less than the grey really seems to be with brace on mean therapy from mm -hmm. what we've seen. Um, but obviously that's not available. Um, I've just been asked to repeat the ISO center shift. So we align to the um, align the lasers to the anterior midline tattoo and then we shift to a maximum seven centimeters laterally and then we shift and 
posts to ensure that the couch height is no greater than 28 centimeters. Uh, we do not use a floor twist uh, for the bow tie technique. No, it's coplanar. Um, um, with VMAT, do you use one or both arms up? We use a breastboard with both arms up. There's another comment here. What about SCF with VMAT? Well, our nodal PTV that we're optimizing to includes all of the nodal targets. So it's all treated by the same two partial arc VMAT beams. Would you use VMAT to treat thin chest wall patients? So I, I guess this has been discussed um, a little bit throughout the day. Um, I think for those patients that are very, very thin, you would consider using bolus, would I be right yeah. there? And um, we have treated relatively thin chest wall patients using uh, this bow tie VMAT technique, and it has looked really it's successful in terms of a dose distribution, and actually the aperture shapes um, seem reasonable and it verified well. Uh, another one from Stephanie, who wins the award for most <laughs> active participant today. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, so a question for all speakers. I note the absence of data regarding fixed field IMRT. Is there a reason fixed field IMRT wasn't considered in the comparative studies? Um, I would think that's because of how long it takes to deliver. Uh, yeah, so um, we, so our, our second shoot, white tangents, is a form of fixed field IMRT, um, but we didn't use a fixed field IMRT with more than two beams at the level of the breast, and that's because we felt that we could achieve equivalent dose distributions or better with our uh, VMAP bow tie in quicker delivery times. And also from the thing, they published planning studies prior to this, uh, to our comment, uh, commencing our study, um, VMAP has been shown to be superior to the fixed field IMRT, so we excluded that from our comparison. So Alex is just needing to run away, but there's one more. Have you considered using four partial arcs? Um, four partial arcs, so that would be using um, a sort of double bow tie, I guess. Um, I think we have I think somebody at our centre has attempted, I don't think we've ever used it clinically, and I don't think we've done much work up, but what we found is that um, we're able to generate reasonable, um, acceptable uh, dose distribution, like the one that I showed, using the two partial arcs, and there wasn't, as far as I'm aware, too much of an advantage of using the full partial arcs, but I haven't looked into that in much detail. Brilliant. So we're um, we're at 1:30. Um, I want to uh, thank all of the speakers. I want to thank Emma and the team at the college um, who've been doing a lot of running around behind the scenes, getting this all flowing smoothly. Um, any other questions? Um, we will uh, we can deal with by correspondence afterwards. I'm very happy to be emailed um, anna.kirby at rmh.nhs.uk. Um, uh, depending on how many there are, it may be next week before I get back <laughs> to you. Um, but I want to thank you all for participating. Um, and obviously, the beauty of the webinar is that you can now access this at any time in the future with your friends and colleagues from the, the department. And of course, once you do that, I believe you can get to your CPD um, in return for listening. Anything else you want to add, Emma? Yes. Excellent. Therefore, I will close the session and thank you again for participating.